Welcome back to Introduction to Programming. This is video 13 in our series. My name is John Duane. Today we are going to continue our discussion of controlling program flow. Our focus today will be on looping. I will describe what looping is and why we use it. We will go over some very simple examples to get familiar with the different looping techniques available to us in Visual Basic 6.0 and VBA. In the next video, we'll do another more complex example where we apply looping to a realistic programming situation, finding the zip code for a given city. But that's for next time. For now, let's go over the basics. First of all, what is looping? As this picture shows, looping is the execution of a set of instructions the uh, conditional code in this picture uh, over and over again until a desired result is achieved. Looping is a way to process larger data sets with minimal amount of code writing. One of the keys in looping is making sure the loop knows when to stop. Otherwise you'll get stuck in what everyone has heard uh, at least one time or another in an infinite loop. Now our examples, unlike the last few videos, will go back to manipulating worksheet objects in Excel. This will allow us to demonstrate loops, but also to practice some Excel macro techniques. Okay, so let's go uh, to our examples. So I have a program started here called Looping Demo. Uh, I've got one integer variable called i. Um, I is kind of interesting um, name for variable. It's unlike the other variable names that you've seen me use. Uh, it's uh, a traditional counting variable. Uh, i or maybe j. Um, those are two very, very common counting variables. So they won't be prefixed with int to let people know that it's an integer. It's uh, uh, it's kind of a traditional usage. Um, the next few lines will uh, get us onto the right sheet in the workbook. You see over here in the Solution Explorer there are three sheets and I want to go to sheet one. Uh, the next command clears all the cells, basically erases everything on that sheet um, just to get rid of any data that was there previously. Then um, range A1 select, that gets me to cell A1. And then we come to our first loop. So this is the first type, very um, old, it's probably in the first version of Visual Basic, or just plain old basic way back in uh, the 70s. This is called a four next loop. You got four in the beginning and next on the last line. So what this does is it will repeat all of the uh, commands between the four and the next uh, and it will repeat them with a counter so I is the counter and so it will uh, I starts out at one and it will go to a high of 20 so that means this uh, loop will go 20 times so it will go through the first iteration I is one it'll do this it'll do this and then when it hits this command, it'll increment i to 2. And it'll continue on until it's 20. When, when it finally gets i to 20 and it loops back up, uh, this command will check to see what the value of i is. Since it's 20, it will stop. It won't do these uh, commands. And it will come down and continue to the end of the program. Uh, what's happening in the middle here is that the active cell, it'll start off at a1 is going to receive the value of i. So we should see 1 through 20 on the worksheet when we execute. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take a look at the worksheet. And lo and behold, there we go, 1 through 20 in column A. So let's go back to our code. Uh, we're going to do another looping example. This is one of the first. Uh, of three do loops uh, you're going to see. 
So we go back up to A1, and this loop looks a lot different, right? It starts with do, and uh, it has loop as the, uh, the last term. So this is a little more uh, of a modern incarnation of looping. Uh, this one will loop until the active cell is empty, or it will loop until this expression is true. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to continue down column A for the entire uh, length of it uh, until there's no more data. So that's really going to be 20 cells. I don't have to tell it 20. I'm, I'm just telling it go until you reach an, uh, an empty cell in the worksheet. Um, now the way it goes down is with this expression. So this is active cell offset uh, one zero, meaning a row column uh, select. So this is a way to move the cursor down one cell at a time. And what I'm going to be doing is in the active cell offset same row one column over, so zero one, I'm going to put into that cell uh, whatever is in the active cell in column A, I'm going to multiply it by 10. So that's the do until loop. So let's uh, let's try that. We'll see what that looks like. So it went down this entire row uh, column, and for each each item, it multiplied uh, what was in uh, column A by one by 10 and put the value there. So that's the do until loop, and it stopped once it got down to 21, where there uh, was an empty cell. All right, let's uh, let's do another one. This is called the do while loop. Well, the do while loop uh, is kind of like do until. Um, so whatever uh, the commands are between the first and the last uh, lines of the construct, uh, you will do those while this is true, while this condition is true. So here I'm doing while the active cell is not empty. Kind of the same as this one, but just said in a different way. Um, and so what uh, we're going to be doing in between the do while and the loop uh, keyword is I'm going to uh, do that mod division operation of the active cell value. Uh, so I'm going to divide it by 2, uh, come up with the remainder. If the remainder is 0, and that's what mod does, then I know I've got myself an even number. And so I'll put even, uh, you know, two columns over. Uh, otherwise, I'll put odd, since the, uh, the remainder is probably 1 in that case. So let's run that, see how that works. And there we have odd, even, odd, even, odd, even, all the way down to 20. And it looks like uh, the odds are definitely odd. And and uh, <laughs> this is kind of interesting. We're uh, assessing the value in A for odd, even, not the value in B. Obviously, everything in B would be even. So that's the do while. And that was, uh, that was kind of cool because it let us practice our if. Uh, else and if uh, construct as well as use the uh, the mod uh, operator. Okay, let's do another one. This is another do loop. This one's a, a little different also because uh, let me copy it over so you can see it. This is another do loop, uh, but here the condition isn't in the first line, it's in the last line. So we are going to do this, uh, these two activities here, uh, and when the uh, condition here exists, so this is very similar to what we had up above, when uh, active cell mod 2 equals 0, uh, basically if we have an even number, uh, we uh, will stop. So we'll, uh, or as long as we have an even number, we will continue. Once that is not true, we will stop. Um, the one uh, interesting nuance of this is that 
because there is no condition next to the do, you will always do the first item, no matter what. So let's uh, let's take a look at that. Come on, here, here we go. So this one only did two items. So it did the first item where it did, it didn't even have a uh, a condition to check for. Um, so let's go back to code. What exactly were we doing? We were multiplying the active cell by 100. And did that happen? Yes, that happened. So 1 times 100 is 100. Um, but then it was checking for even. Uh, so it was going to do uh, the operation if the item was even. It was in this case. Uh, it found that the item in A3 was not even. So it didn't do it, and it stopped. So that's the do with uh, the while condition in the last line. Um, so those are those are three examples, very small uh, data sets here, you know, one through twenty. Um, but I think you kind of get the idea. Uh, let's um, so let's stop with those examples right now um, and wrap up. So. The four next loop and the three do loops. That's what we covered uh, here. Uh, three. The key things to remember are, the, are these. Remember that um, loops need a place to begin. Uh, they need some type of increment, and they need some way to stop. Uh, those three ingredients are extremely important. Um, these loops are very powerful, and programmers use them extensively. It's, it's a rare program that doesn't have some looping in there somewhere. Uh, they're a key tool for working with large data sets. And we'll see that in the next video, where we write a program to look up your city's zip code. Well, that's it for today. I hope this was helpful. Please subscribe to this video series and write comments about anything that was not clear. Uh, I will monitor the comments, and I'll definitely respond. So we'll see you next time.